Engineer 775 here um, at a new new home, a new uh, bug out location, and uh, we're putting it. We just had a well drilled, and we're going to be putting in a grid pump, a regular 220 submersible pump that's been sized for the for the well. And I'm working with a very experienced pump installer. Has been working on this these pumps and wells for about 50 years. So I'm really here to pick his brain on a few things, and, um, and then I'm also. Uh, putting in a simple pump hand pump along with it. So a lot of times it's the best thing to do if you're getting a new well drilled is to contact me and we'll put a cap in place first. And once the cap's in place then we can put the submersible pump in and that makes it so much easier than having to pull the other pump. So we're going to go through this kind of step by step and uh, get the pump in the well and uh, later on we'll hook it to the bladder tank in the house. All right. Great tool, sonic water level meter. The first thing we do on the job is we want to verify our static water level. So you hold the button down, and I don't know if you can hear it, but the sonic is shooting. We got 41 foot static water level, temperature 44 degrees. This is a meter from ravenscorp.com. It's a seven gallon a minute well. We're putting a, a what is it, one horsepower? Eight. One horse. Eight gallon a minute. Eight gallon a minute Myers submersible pump. And uh, it's been sized. You need to size your pump. You need to know your pump curve so you know what the you match your pump to the recovery rate of the well as much as best you can. All right. Predator plus. That's a good pump. Good. I've used the Myers since 1962. They have a does that have a built in shape? On a deep setting, the standard in the industry in the standard on a deep setting, and I've seen a lot of guys don't here never do it. I pull that pump set 500 feet, and that's the only check valve they have. Is that one. Standard industry is every 200 feet, put another check in line. Okay. Because what happens is, when the pump goes off, you go to all the watermen at pump column and it does a little drop and it hammers these impellers. Uh, and after a while, it'll do a number on it. Gotcha. But if this check goes bad, it gets backups. It's going to keep leaking back, kicking the pump on all the time. Right. So if you got a check in line, that helps it. So this one, we're going to we're going to run a check about the seventh month. Just one check. Because they say every 200 feet we're only going to put a 280. Right. So we're going to run it for, on, that's 14 lengths, we're running on the 7. I don't know, unless it's a big producer, like 20 gallon minute pump. It must be their flex. Make sure when you think, you know, make sure you're in that notch. Right. But it's catching on the bell. Well, I'll get you on the bell. Elevator clamps. They come different sizes, inch, inch and a quarter, two inch. water sensor in on a well? Have you ever had to do that? I have, but it got to the point with all the cables and everything going down, it got to be a real pain. But So if I do anything... Just size the pump smaller? Uh, size the pump where I can put, like the one I'm doing now, I can put a water restrictor on top at the discharge. Yeah. They come in one gallon, two gallon, three gallon, five gallon a minute. Yeah. So no matter what the pump's pumping, it's only going to pump three gallons or four gallons. Ah. So it, it matches open. the recovery rate. Yeah, and then the other thing I do is on is a, that a usually cycle stop valve. No, huh? You cycle stop valves. You know what those are? No, I've seen a bunch of those. The anyway. other, the other thing I do is uh, on anything under five gallons a minute. Is I run a, I put a low level pressure switch on the tank. You know, they're the ones with the little lever on the side. Oh yes. So if the pump pumps out of water and, and the pressure switch detects the drop, it'll let back and pop some points so And they'll have to restart it manually. Yeah. That and that, that, that could be, and they have to, the homeowner has to understand that because 
A lot of times they get a phone call, I'm out of water, well they had a lightning storm, they lost power. And you can't be colorblind. Right. Because <laughs> our wine black right. people have it, and they hook them up fast backwards. <laughs> a three phase, it doesn't matter because on a three phase, if you don't get you turn it on, you're not getting the water you want, you just switch any two wires. But, and all these are single phase in most residential. But yeah, those you're gonna have four wires. Putting a torque arrestor on, just need one on the on the system. It makes it better if you don't put the wires in 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 part inside of that, and then you line up one of these slots with where the wire channel comes. And we'll see why in a minute. The scary ones when we're running the old galvanized ones that are down at 400 feet. That hurt. I've bent a lot of pipes and uh, just pulled one of those out. I forgot how painful your pain in the end. <laughs> Just sizing it up, I got you. Okay. Start from the center, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I start, start from the center and work center out. Center out. And I probably, I can use them. I usually use a heat gun because I got map gas, which is weak. If you have, if you're using Schedule 80 with this male of male threads. Okay. So you would just use that as your coupling instead of putting a coupler on it. Gotcha. You, you'd have to run a coupling. If it's male of male, you have to get the PVC right. couplings. Right. So you, instead of the coupling, wherever you put, you just run your check. So it's just a, it's called a long. That's a one inch long body. One inch long body check valve. Okay, there's the box. Right there. Most guys that I worked on down here in a period there last year where they were having trouble with the check balance in the pump. Oh. So they were sending to try to keep the wire tight. And I taped, after this, I taped every 10 feet. So two tapes, a wire. Tape it to the pipe first. Yeah, to the pipe first. And then right hand tight. DSI is everywhere now. DSI out of like, West Hickory? Columbia. West yeah, Columbia. Columbia. Hickory is where they sell the pump and everything. Okay. But, you know, I get it out of West Columbia. Take the bus this way every Tuesday. Make delivery. Every Tuesday. Check valve in the middle of this. 
this set up. Usually you put them over 200 feet. I mean, this will take a lot of load off the uh, impeller in the submersible. Okay, we're going to put nickel in there now for the well, our well seal for the simple pump and this elevator clamp. Got it? Yeah, one inch elevator. Got our T's and everything. We have true blue out. Not quite as nice as this. Uh, <laughs> All right, we have a lot of homemade stuff. We got feed wires. How much wire do you want left on top? Um, you set screws down. There, it'll go right on. You need to right. turn this to go out this way, or you can come up and in now. We're going. probably going to might as well head towards the house. That would be fine right there. Okay, so we just finished up our submersible pump install and we've set everything on the simple pump cap. It's so much easier. If you're going to go ahead and drill a well, um, you know, you might want to think about, if you're ever thinking about putting a hand pump on, it's so much easier if you put the cap in place first. So you, as you build up from the bottom, you can plumb it for your other pump. It's okay to do it the other way. This just saves a lot of time and aggravation to do it up front. So if you're going to put a backup well or maybe it's a new construction, go ahead and uh, put the simple pump well seal in place first and then then plumb to it so okay i think that's it we're uh, wrapping up this job another job with engineer 775